the baby. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the vlog. I'm the superstar. We are at Valley de Wine. We're going to make this an absolute amazing episode of uniqueness. Uniqueness. Now that I got rid of the madman here, welcome back. I'm uh, still in Valley de Wine and I decided to stay actually for the end of the evening for sunset because um, we've got some really nice clouds that are in the sky, They're quite grey uh, on there with a lot of layering as well. And hopefully we get a gap in the west. But We've come to the eastern side of the beach now, and as you can see behind me here, you have this singular stack. And it generally is the area that people will come to to take some photographs of. So we said we'd come along here because the water is nice and high. You can get some lovely types of shots here. Now, probably what I am going to do is take a couple of types of shots. One is I'm going to have receding water. So we're kind of up high here on the beach, and as the waves come in, as you see here, they break just beforehand and then they pause and then recede back out. So I'm going to take a shot there with that, probably around maybe half a second exposure. And that will give me a nice leading line of the water going back out towards the stack. Then what I'm also going to do is I'm going to put on my 10 stop and I'm going to take a long exposure shot to smooth out that water and have a very minimalist type of image actually. None of the foreground renting here before me, just a singular stack sitting in the bay as you see before me. Then we'll see what will happen. Hopefully the light will come. Um, it's around about quarter past seven now, so we've an hour and a half until sunset. So maybe in an hour's time, we'll start to see some bit of blush of color in the clouds in here. Hopefully, fingers crossed. So that's what we're doing anyway today. Let's go join me and let's see how we go. taking my first couple of shots now and what I've noticed actually is there's actually more movement in the water as the waves are breaking in uh, towards me rather than actually going out. still think I got a nice shot though of the water actually going out but when it's coming in I'm taking a half a second shutter shot, shutter speed and that's capturing the movement and the energy of the water as well as it comes in then towards me. I have my stack pretty much in the center of the frame and the top uh, third as well in the rule of thirds and then you know like this one here now you get lovely movement where the water actually will break around that and the clouds of it also are really really nice as well now all I'm using is a 0 0.9 ND grad and I have it pretty much very far down because I want to make sure that I'm getting as much opportunity to capture a half a second exposure as possible so that's my first type of shot in here that I've taken now I'm now going to put on my uh, 10 stop and I'm going to take a longer exposure just because I really like those clouds that are there in the sky and hopefully I'll get a nice shot at that point. I've come back up further on the beach now to avoid the spray of the water and also the movement of the waves as they break on the stones below me. With the stones here, there's always a slight bit of movement and the reason I've come back up is because I'm going for a very, very long exposure. I did a test shot there a moment ago. I got up as far as a minute and a half. I'm gonna go as far as two minutes now because a minute and a half was fine, but it was just that slight bit underexposed. Huh? It's total minimalist, like. Way better than I
after my long exposure shots now, what I decided to do is come over here because as the water comes in, it kind of funnels in around me and then comes straight out back from the camera. And what that does is it gives me a nice leading line then of the uh, water as it goes back out as well over towards the stack. I think it's actually quite interesting because once I get this shot here, like a wave that comes in like this, I can also pause the movement of the water right at the beginning or right at the end of it. And then what it also does is that it ends up being a nice leading line going out. So that's that shot now. I'll show you what it is next. And I'm going to go over here to some rocks because I think I'm going to get some nice shots as well over there. to the other side of the beach here and as you can see I have a number of rocks that are around me now I've got the camera up high at the moment but I am going to go down low because I want to be able to extenuate those uh, rocks by size by getting down low and also with the movement of the water as it comes in around those rocks as well I want to be able to capture it as it comes in and also as it sweeps back out to capture the flow and the movement and the energy and everything else that's around these images my settings at the moment are uh, for my preferred half a second so I've adjusted my uh, settings there now I'm actually at ISO 50 and I've got it at f14 and that allows me to be able to get a half a second now as the light will fade I know that I'll be able to get uh, a longer exposure or even a wider open aperture but I don't really need it in that way I'm focusing as well at the rock just below me here and I think everything should be uh, in focus but yeah I'll show you the up high image now and then I'll drop down low and I'll find the composition and then I'll show you what I found at that point. I think I found my composition actually here, coming down low, it's actually quite nice. I'm framing it with a rock on the left, another rock on the right, and then the stack, which is just off to the center actually within the frame. And what I'm doing is I'm waiting for a relatively large wave to be able to come in because it sweeps in then below me here, taking away all of the sand that I see in front and creating a flow and filling that space actually within the image. I think it's a, a really, really nice shot here. The clouds are really, really nice today. And despite there not being much flow in the water earlier on, because now we're at high tide, I am getting that good flow. So it's just a matter of waiting for a wave. They come probably every 10 or 15. There's no real science to it, I don't think, but um, 
once I get a big wave that comes in and then sweeps in around here, comes up around my feet, and I capture all of that energy then as well and momentum as it comes through. Now, I'll wait actually here for a moment because there's one here that might actually reach me. Going my luck, it probably won't, but we'll see anyway here because it's coming in on top of it here. So you can see this bigger one. Now that's coming in, and then I just capture that shot here. And that is some way of what I'm looking for, but I want a bigger wave, obviously, to be able to get that movement and get that raw energy as the wave, as it comes around my feet as well here. So yeah, that's this shot now again, and now I'm gonna go a bit further over to my left. I think I spot another composition there with a number of rocks, so I'll grab to that one after this. Since I've come over here actually, I took a couple of different types of shots. I took my half a second, I took a one second, and then I've actually put back on my 10 stopper because with all the movement that's here, there are some rocks that are covered in some seaweeds. And I think that that's going to be really, really nice with everything else moving around those. Now, learning from what I would have had earlier on here with a two minute and 45 second exposure, um, I'm a bit more into the sun. So I'm only gonna stop this at around about two minutes and that should work. I'm at 1 minute 51 now at the moment, so I'll just wait now for that to finish cooking and then I'll stop it and then we'll see do I actually get a nice shot from here because I do think it's going to be nice. So I'll have a look here. And believe it or not, and believe it or not, I actually have to go further. So two minutes is actually not enough, so I'm probably going to go up further again now, probably around about maybe three, three and a half minutes because the light actually is starting to fade. It's not as bright as it was earlier on because the sun is starting to go down. So I'll take that here and then we'll see how or what type of shot I'll get from this. Now, as you can see here, with all the messing that's going on here with Dermot, I really, really had a great and fun evening with him, but I forgot to turn on the receiver to record the audio for my outro. But it was a fantastic day, and I think I got some great shots, and I really enjoyed hanging out with Dermot as well. Great to see him back making videos once again. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed coming along on this episode. Thank you very much, as always, for watching. If it's the first time on the channel, please hit the subscribe button. If you like, give me a comment. And until the next time, long before, not long to that, Oh, my God.